This is the video where we explore painting non-metallic metals, this time with the sky earth technique. This figure is a Reaper Yvonne. It's kind of a classic figure and it's really really great for our purposes. As you can see there's a lot of different a lot of different places that we can show the horizon line. And that's that's really the biggest the biggest single thing that you need to think about with this technique. Regular non-metallic metal where it's just kind of steel plate it's not as important but if you're gonna do the shiny really shiny polished steel chrome you need to really think about horizon lines and this figure helps and some of the colors will too have a range of different products here I've got some Reaper colors out here blue liner it's a very deep very intense color. Not quite as thick as regular paint, but not quite as thin as some of your washes are. This is Violet Shadow. It's kind of a really nice dark blue. Got this intermediate blue from Vallejo. And also this underbelly blue. And we will kind of bounce back and forth between these two colors and the deep sky and verdigris. So these four, this is what we're going to use to establish this sky part of the sky earth. Well, and then to represent the earth tones, got some leather brown from Vallejo and this maiden flesh from Reaper. And some of these they're going to find You'll find these will be mixed together. It's not just going to be these two to represent the earth. It's going to be a little bit of some of these other colors mixed in as well. And here I've got this. This is kind of a neutral white over here. The white scar. We may use this for some of the brightest kind of little spectral highlights. Maybe even mixed with some of the maiden flesh. We may even throw in this ice yellow because again what what's gonna show up on some of your hair well the sunlight and the sun is not necessarily going to be just dead white maybe we want a little bit of color to it as well so we've talked about the miniatures talked about the paints we need to discuss brushes in our palette Before we get started with the miniature, I thought I might do a few little sketches to serve as a reference guide for when we actually work on the miniature. I thought I might also explain the principles behind this whole sky earth. As you can see by the way these are arranged in this little mini palette here. Obviously earth tones over here, your sky tones over here. So I have kind of our set them out this way. We've got kind of a really darks over here. And what I'm going to do is try and kind of set the environment, set the context here that we're going to start out with the miniature. Now, with the miniature, we don't have a background. We're in two dimensions here, so I have to kind of show a background. I'm going to mix that up now. I'm going to use one of these brushes here now. Taking some of the blue and the brown together. I'm going to have to throw some brown out there again. I just want to get kind of a background color. that's neither not really sky or earth colored I'm 
But we just need a little bit of dark here. So that uh, all the other work we're going to do shows up. Okay, so let's put a little bit of the leather brown back out here. There we go. So that, that's going to provide just enough. Just enough context for us here. So the whole idea we want to show this horizon line. Well, the way you show a horizon line is by making it the color of the horizon line. So what did I do? I just took the same color I've been mixing for see it's a little more blue, a little more brown. So I took some of that color here. On, this is a, a sword blade we're going to represent here. You can see how this horizon line is not just straight across. Even though this is a think of this as a gauntlet on an arm, it's still going to have a few variations because, well, that's what a horizon line does. Now, if you're going to get really crazy with this, and you've got, say, a 72 millimeter figure, well, you might actually have mountains or some or a person or whatever actually reflecting in that armor. We're just we're just trying to teach you the basics here, so we won't get that crazy that fast. But essentially, okay, to represent the Earth section, we've got a horizon line. Well, now we need the rest of the Earth section. It's reflected light. That's that's all non-metallics. That's what they really really rely on is that notion of reflected light. So let's do this on the sword blade here. And it's this notion of reflected light. What's it reflecting? It's reflecting the ground. Horizon line is going to be, we'll even make that a little bit darker. And we're going to pull out some brown liner actually to do that, to make that darker. Now you don't want your reflected lights to compete too much with your highlights. You want the sky, obviously, to be much brighter than anything you do with the earth tones. So there we go. This is a good start on the earth tone part of this. But we need to do the sky now. And this is why I've used this kind of a cyan. It's essentially a sky blue. thing with our sword blade. I'm going to go with one of my number eight rounds. This is going to get a little more into this deep sky. This is really an, a nice, intense color. It's going to get even a little more intense with that sky blue. And now, some verdigris. Continue to lighten it towards that horizon line. You can even put clouds in there if you wanted to. But again, 
we, we want to keep things a little bit more simple than that, especially if this is your first time with this technique. So back to the verdigris. Little touch of that maiden flesh to keep it from getting too too light too fast. You can see we've worked our way down towards that horizon line. I haven't gone anywhere near my lightest light yet. We're still, still working our way towards that. Again, just kind of working my way, picking away towards the horizon, getting brighter and brighter. Remembering to keep that horizon line an interesting shape. So I think of this as kind of the, the edge of the gauntlet. Like so. Now at this point, that's where we kind of have our, that's what we've saved our white for. Just a few places along the horizon on our sword blade it's be right down here right down center right along that edge and not forgetting the sky and now in opposition to that, the earth. A little bit of contrast. Man, we can we can make the earth tones more warm if we want to, but again, not as intense. That's what you're gonna get on on your horizon line. And as need be, you can tone down your blues if you feel that they're too intense. So this, this gives you a little bit of a sense now of sky Sky and Earth, and this is what we want to do all around the miniature. Just use the same colors I'm going to use here. So hopefully this little reference guy, this can actually help you into the future as well. You can kind of look back at this. So what in the world was he talking about? And so with this, I think we are armed and dangerous and ready to work on our miniature. I have a few colors out on the palette, the brown liner and the white. And pretty much just in these next couple of minutes, I want to try and 
really reinforce some of those horizon lines. So try to make this so you can see it. I've got the brown liner. What I'm trying to do is work this edge right here. And what I want to do is try and get a little bit of so I can do that to more. This is darker, a little more intense than the other one. So we're going to make the other one match that. We've got that established on that particular plate. We're going to do that here, right there, at the top of this plate. We have to do cross the knee plate there. I'm going to see if the sword plate can get a little bit darker down on the end. Over here, just right there, that little line. I'm going to restore some of these lines between the plates. A little bit there. See this right here needs to be sharpened, more defined. Dark edge on the gauntlet. Let's see if I can get this in the scene for you. See that one spot there? And then So as you can see how it's lighter here, darker here. Essentially what we've got on our example. I also need something similar right there. Need a little definition down by the feet here. We've pretty much gotten the dark colors, the darkest darks that we need. Put some right there. The sword blade is pretty well set. Which means I'm going to do the last last piece of this and that's going to be taking those really bright colors see there's areas here that can be highlighted areas around the horizon line that's what some of these are these brightest brightest highlights can see a few, there's just a few places I may 
while I have the earth colors out, or I might want to just bring a little more. There we go. And on the other side of that armor plate, just need it a little more. A little more there. I want a little more on the lower parts of the chin here. Okay, so we'll stop here, and we'll try and uh, try and hit some few very bright highlights to kind of finish finish off your effect. Out on the palette, I've got my white maiden flesh. Tiny little bit of the deep sky, just in case I need it to work work backwards a little bit, a little bit more towards the dark. I've also got some of this flow improver out. It's gonna be really important at this stage. I don't want things to get too watery and out of control, but yet, see, it's thin this down. So I'm gonna pick a few spots along this that I know need some bright highlights like this leading edge here so right there see this just that one spot gonna march my way right down just hitting those spots the chain mail will need a few few loops also get a bright highlight just a few I'm going to let some of these work their way down Words are along this edge because that was just starting to disappear a bit too much. Just hit a few of those. Let's nab a few lights along the top surface of that plate. Do a few little highlights on that sword hilt. Now along these knee pads, try and rotate this around so you can see it. I want my horizon line to be nice and bright. Gonna catch some of this top edge there. Gonna let some of the uh, maiden flesh in down because it's so close to the ground. And just along that 
armor plate, do a little bit on toes there. On this side, the same thing. This is where I'm going to take some of the deep sky and some of the white. Gonna work in here a little bit. This needs needs a little more pizzazz, a little more sparkle. It's looking a little too a little too subdued, a little too almost rusted. Don't want that. Not with shiny not with supposed to be shiny armor. I've livened this up a little bit. Go even a little further. some of the white put some right here so that adds a little more flavor there I want to get as white as I can Now I've got this part of the chest plate. I want to get a few really, really bright highlights. Oh, let's see if I can get the top edge. Top edge of the sword. Okay, this side of the, like this, certainly needs something here. Along that top edge, this top edge certainly needs a little something. Gonna check this out. Okay, I see the chain mail back here. While a lot of it is in shadow, I still want to try and bring out a few few rings. Okay, 